Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at Critter, an open source painting program. Let's have a look at it. Go to File and then open the page, select all your settings and then click Create. On the right hand side we'll be importing a photo in the uh, box here. We're looking for the exact reference place on my computer at the moment as you can see and uh, I'll keep looking for that. Not exactly sure where it is. So I think it's in documents at uh, my desktop. So once you get to the place where it is there's some visual references underneath where you can actually find the uh, the picture itself and where is it it's coming up soon i think um let's have a look there they are and it's a picture of mrs jackson there you go mrs jackson so what we want to do after that is actually import the image to the uh, to a layer so that's what we're doing now by going to layers and import and then import again as a, a paintable layer that will bring it down to the layer box on the right hand side but what we need to do first is scale it so we're going to go to the on the left hand side we're going to scale the image up to the size of the page that we need and make sure that that's centered as well. In the layer panel we're going to reduce the opacity of this particular layer so we can see through it. Create a new layer. We're going to draw on this layer so I'll go to brush at the top we'll change the options for the opacity and the uh, size of the brush. Make sure that we've got the right colour for the brush and we're going to zoom it up to the size that we need it and we're ready to start painting. So we're going to trace round the photo uh, getting all the key areas out but I'm not going to bore you with this because it took several minutes to do so it'll be partly time lapsed and speeded up so I'll let you uh, enjoy watching this and just looking at the key areas of the image that we'll need to be able to paint the rest of this photo although we are only going to uh, in the final painting look at the um, one side of the face because we haven't really got time to do the entire face. So now we're doing uh, the other eye and this is the eye that we're going to be focusing his attention on with uh, the painting and uh, it really is just tracing round the detailed areas. I had a bit of a problem here with uh, one of my option buttons coming up so I apologise for that and uh, as you can see it kept coming up and I don't know why but uh, the program itself is a very smooth running program and uh, it's got lots of brushes and uh, it really is a powerful tool uh, pretty much similar to uh, Coral uh, Painter so we'll just do a bit more finishing off round various bits of detail and uh, I ended up clicking on that button 
because it kept on coming up but uh, we'll finish around the eye and various bits of detail uh, I've took the opacity down and uh, the size of the uh, the brush down a bit on this particular brush and uh, it stopped happening that thing so we're going to go into uh, speeded up mode uh, in a few seconds because the rest of the drawing uh, I'll do fairly quickly in speed mode so we're now in uh, speed mode and we're going round the rest of the face tracing it out when you've completed this process you will have a full trace of the face that we can use as a guide for where we're going to be doing the painting and we're nearly there so we're about to start moving on to the next pro we'll reduce this now so we can see the entire image and then remove the uh, the, the photograph by switching off the eye on that layer so you can actually see the drawing that we've traced now we'll zoom the layer back up now to the kind of size that we need it to be so we're focused on the eye and we're going to now um, go to the layers panel and create a new uh, painting layer which is up at the top so that we can actually paint on this particular layer there it is the new layer that's what we're going to be painting on we'll adjust the opacity and the size of the brush and the type of uh, brush shape you, that you can use so we've got a, a nice big washy brush for covering large areas so that's the shape changed here is the opacity because we want it fairly transparent and uh, that's a fairly nice sized brush although I might nip it down a bit yeah that's about right so we'll take it that far so we'll go to the colour picker and pick a, a light yellow but uh, try and find one that's not too strong and we're ready to paint We're using light directional strokes here. I am going to make some adjustments to that because it's a little bit light. So I might even uh, change the brush that I am going to do. Uh, let's have a look. This one here. Uh, I will have to make adjustments to the uh, opacity again every time you choose a new brush you have to make another brush and uh, make that a nice broad brush that's better and uh, again it's directional and uh, you keep building layers up like this and that is really what we're going to do for the rest of the painting So we're working around the outside of the eye uh, and the dark and light contrast. Uh, still working with this light undertone of uh, yellow if you want to call it that. But um, we'll see how that changes and how that affects the rest of the painting later on. And we're moving away from the eye now and uh, still in a directional kind of a way. We're... Uh, trying to t suggest shape and form so we're getting uh, quite a bit of it done now and this is just the undertonal painting 
So we're going to speed it up now because it took nearly half an hour to actually paint the rest of the uh, painting. I'm putting some uh, pink more fleshy colours into it now and uh, you'll start to see how things form and shape with uh, adding a bit of colour and you can see how three dimensions will start to appear as you add more colours in this. So uh, this is now uh, 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 being done in a speed painting mode. We've got most of the mid-tones in, so we're just going to start putting some of the darker tones in. Uh, it will help with uh, a real sense of depth and three-dimensionality. And you, you will start to see how the faces becoming much more realistic. And, and this is all down to putting your, your early tonal values down in the first place obviously we'll, we'll be doing bits of highlighting and this is still a fairly big brush covering a large area uh, of the painting we'll go into detailed bits in a short while so we're making adjustments to the brush all the time so that we can get different types of brush texture and uh, layerings. As you can see we've made the brush a lot smaller now because we're working around the eye area. I'm doing the under lid of the eye and with eyes as well it's always nice to get a little bit of the flesh tone. Uh, in the whites of the eyes it tends to give it a more realistic feel and uh, a, a, a bit of a shadow on the upper part of the eye uh, also gives it that sense of three dimension and you've got your uh, eyelashes there and uh, that little crease that you have above your eye so these are details that give your eye a bit of reality but we'll, we'll come into the uh, main part of the eye in a short while but it is just getting bits of detail in and uh, don't be too detailed with the actual eye because it can make it look unrealistic uh, just give an impression and you'll find that that works a lot better so we're continuing with getting bits of the eye highlighted and putting a, a bit of a dark area over the top of the eye to key it into the rest of the eye. We've just also changed the colour and uh, added a little bit of an highlight spot there. Um, we'll do little bits of white area throughout. So. Now we're going to uh, do a little bit of the eyebrow there and uh, with a bigger brush now with the opacity up a bit higher we're doing the air uh, and that will really start to make the image come out and look a lot more three dimensional and this is something you can do layer after layer after layer. So we're not that far off uh, completing this now, but uh, this is nearly to the end of the uh, time lapse video. We're now finishing up with doing bits of detailing work with highlights and things like that off camera. You can see that I did layer 5 and layer 4. They are exactly the same as these layers, but um, they have various different colours in them and textures. Uh, I'm just doing some detailing around the 
nose area and that is really it but as I said I did two more layers I'm going to switch off the drawing layer and we're going to have a look at how those two other layers on top affect it you, they've been switched on but they're just on top of one another at the moment so I'm going to blend layer 5 and then I'm going to blend layer 4 uh, into the other layer and that gives you your final blends so anyway thank you for watching this video I hope it's been instructional for you and uh, keep watching the rest of the hop because there's some great stuff on it thank you and bye